Not everyone knows this, but international students aren't just allowed to, they're incentivized to start a business here in Canada. This video is your step-by-step -step guide to figuring out what business to start, setting up process, getting your first clients, and scaling beyond what you thought was possible. I interviewed four successful immigrant business owners, two of them running online businesses and the other two running physical product businesses. Meet Simon, a seven-figure digital marketing agency founder, MC, a six-figure online coaching business owner, Joyce, a creator of a hair brand selling around Atlantic Canada and entering Walmart, and Lucy, a passionate coffee shop owner in Vancouver. This video will have a bunch of strategies and tools we use to run our businesses, so make sure you don't skip anything, and at the very end, I'll cover permits and how to actually register a name and a business in Canada. Step one, find a personal problem. Even though you might think your life's great, the minute you wake up, you start facing problems. For me, it was moving to Canada, getting my study permit. It turned out to be more difficult than I expected. And guess what? Others face the same problem. I started fixing my own problem at first. Mm -hmm. And then now, it also helping other people too. So it's all based on my experience because it's a mentorship business. Mm -hmm. So how, like, the way mentorship works is that you have to share your experience with other people so that they learn from it. So I want a natural hair care product for myself and uh, my children, my son was struggling with, uh, he has eczema and I wanted a natural uh, alternative for him. And I was also having weight gain issues at that time mm -hmm. uh, because I just had my daughter, she was just a few months old and I was struggling with uh, postpartum uh, weight gain. I needed to be natural, I wanted more natural product to help me uh, on the journey and that's how needing natural product, uh, you know, skincare and hair care, but then I couldn't find it on the market. Sobeys, Walmart, all the big stores, you know, if you're an immigrant, you don't go looking for the smallest store because you don't even know they exist. So it's the big stores. So I went there looking for them, I couldn't find any. Uh, so that's how I started making my own product. If you're not sure what problems people have, Here's a hint. There are only four types of utility. Place utility, form utility, time utility, and possession utility. Place utility, something is hard to get. You make it easy to get. Form utility, something is already existent, but you get more value out of it. Time utility, something is slow, but you make it go faster. Possession utility, something has a lot of barriers, but you remove the middleman. Let me give you two examples for physical and digital businesses. If you sell clay from Nigeria in Canada to a ceramic store, that's place utility. If you turn that clay into cups, form utility. If you ship clay fast to Canada, time utility. If you connect the ceramics creators directly to ceramic stores in Canada so that they can order without a middleman, that's possession utility. Now a digital business. If you sell presentation templates for doctors online using Kajabi or Gumroad, it's place utility as it's easy to access it. If you build software that automatically designs medical presentations, that's form utility, time utility, session utility. Step two, enter a community. When you face a problem, you then naturally start looking for a solution. Most likely, there is someone out there with the solution you require, but they don't always provide the best solution. So you come up with a better version for that solution. And I started very, very from the ground. So I started making it and uh, in my home, selling it to friends because I was new here. I didn't even know anybody. So it's my husband's friends. You must have a lot of friends. <laughs> no, nope, my husband's friends. I didn't have any friends. So the few people just to test the product, I wasn't even selling, I was giving it to them for trial. And then some of them were like, oh, I will pay for a bigger bottle. So I'm like, okay. So I started giving it to them. And then that's how it evolved. I started going to the market, selling at the market. So, but the branding was done right from the beginning. If you can speak with people privately, be it through messages or face-to-face, -face, make sure that you ask the right questions. I had this like sales call where I asked them what's the their pain points and then you have to custom your program according to their pain you know they need to like feel that oh this is the right program for me so before I have this sales call with them I made sure that I did my assignment I made sure that I asked them that 
hey what are your struggles right now what are your challenges right now and then i create this sales funnel that targeting their pain points so that's very important when you're getting your first client into your door step three contribute to a community once you understand what solutions to problems already exist you step in to contribute this could be leaving a comment reply to someone who's where you were before for me this was when i had already moved to canada and started explaining the process to my friends and family back home and it's very important that you narrow down who it is that you want to help do not make something general you will not out compete huge companies with huge marketing budgets if you go for something very wide simon has great insight for both building a network and tapping into communities when you talk to other cmos like cmos that have raised 100 million dollars cmo like i spoke to the the vp of microsoft teams he was the one who brought microsoft teams to microsoft right i spoke with him and when you learn from all these different people for me, that's why I started Marketing on Mars, and that's why I started the podcast. And when you talk about fun, like for me, I'm, I'm all about fun too. Like I, I feel like business sometimes gets a little bit too serious all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to bring the fun into business. So uh, Marketing on Mars, the premise is I interview CMOs, CEOs, and founders, and I ask them questions that they probably don't want to share in public. Um, things like how much money did they spend? What's the return on investment for different channels? And um, you know, would you invest in, you know, Twitter ads right now or would you not and why? Like questions that they probably don't want to share. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they don't want to answer, they just take a shot of hot sauce. Be as visible as you can on LinkedIn. And like you said, Nike, they, they sell shoes, but everything that they talk about is not shoes. So I would be present, I would be present on LinkedIn, but um, I would not talk about your service. Just provide value. Do videos like this, interview other CEOs or CMOs, or go on the street and ask people, what do you think about this advertisement? I don't know. Something fun, something unique. For me, it's my hot sauce. I hope nobody else is listening to this and starts stealing my idea, but like, just do something fun and, and then people will recognize you. I have something fun for you. Grab a pen and paper. On the left side, write down the community you want to help. In the center, how they spend their time. On the right, problems faced with every activity. Community is people you want to help with the problem you faced. In other words, these are your first customers. Step four, build an MVP for a product or service. MVP stands for minimum viable product. It's a test or whether your product or service will work or not. It's important to start and not get paralyzed by constant learning. You will fail many times. This is why you test with an MVP. You can test with about $200, really. How do I do that? I just buy products from even the local stores, like mm -hmm. raw materials. You can buy a special natural product. You go to health stores, health, health food stores. You can get them from uh, here. I used to buy from Amazon. And there was another uh, shop, Well, well.ca. They sell natural products. So I used to buy the product raw materials from them and Amazon and other um, uh, bulk, but I was buying small, you know, very small, and I was testing all mm -hmm. the ingredients. I had to test them and just mix them and see how they, they work together and all that. Well, social media is there. Mm -hmm. Find people that are willing to take maybe free product to try it. Mm -hmm. If you want to sell it, I mean, if you want to try the product works, the thing is, you need to try the product. You need to test it to make sure it works before you scale, you try to scale. So market is a good place. In Canada, they have that market setting where the locals that come there, they come to support you because they know you need that support. So when you go to those markets, they don't care. They want to support you. So you go and you gather the feedback. Okay, when they use it, uh, what was the feedback? Did they like it? What did they like about it? So that's how I started. But not everyone wants to go to start from the market. So if you want to do from on the internet, you need to talk, have a community, maybe uh, inst Facebook groups, have people that you can get feedback from, and then you start from there. And then gradually with the feedback, you can improve the, 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 the product. But in some cases, for example, if you'd like to start a cafe or a restaurant, that initial investment to test is much higher. Let's say if 
you want to take over any kind of business and the prices on the market is let's say it's hundred thousand mm -hmm. you may need to double up that because two hundred thousand two hundred thousand may mm -hmm. or even more Cause, yeah because hundred thousand is just buying that business mm -hmm. and then another hundred thousand is like uh, how you're gonna construction or a kind of equipment you want to fill up mm -hmm. and in every like a website even small paper you need to consider and have to choose that's all about money mm -hmm. any kind of like a cups what kind of material that's if you're buying the yeah. business right yeah how about you did you buy it yes I actually I bought it the business owner they mm -hmm. just finished the contract with the landlord and they didn't sell it they just left so the site was just empty mm -hmm. and then my landlord wanna rent out again with mm -hmm. the same business and then we found out this information from the website mm -hmm. and we came to check actual the price yes. of the, this business was 10,000 mm -hmm. but 10,000 only include like uh, some chairs table and already there is cat kitchen mm -hmm. and bathroom so which mm -hmm. means no I don't need to do any construction for cafe but now still I need to buy so many things like a coffee machine espresso machine any kind of oven so did whatever. you calculate how much you invested in the equipment yeah it's around 10,000 as well 10,000 so 20,000 yeah. that was the initial cost right initial cost and I think extra more step five get your first sales going from zero to $100 in revenue is the most difficult part I promise think about going for a run the most difficult is to make yourself get up and start to get your first 100 meters all entrepreneurs speak about facing the confidence to make their first sale if you're starting you might find it very difficult to close clients not because you're doing anything wrong right but um, but because it's just a very tough time right it's a very tough time for businesses when I first started in 2017 2018 it was a lucky period of time because I was in the cryptocurrency market and cryptocurrency was booming, booming right? Bitcoin went from $1,000 to $20,000 very quick, right? And so I was very lucky in that space. Right now, what spaces are growing, right? You look at AI, you look at Web3, you look at machine learning, VR, AR. Pharmaceuticals as well. Pharmaceuticals always kind of growing, right? So, so those markets, if you're in those markets and you have experience, you probably will excel very first client I was actually still working at a company um, and I wanted like most people wanted to make extra money so on the side I was really interested in cryptocurrency so I started blogging for a company I think at the time they were paying me $500 a month and I wrote eight articles for them uh, around cryptocurrency and they're like fi 500 or 800 word articles and that was my very very first client if everyone left me tomorrow, I would, I would work for free. But also, like, I have enough experience now. Even if all my clients left me, I still have all the knowledge in my brain. Right. So when you're new to the country, have nothing behind you, uh, no background of um, achievements, let's say, mm -hmm. how do you uh, approach your clients with confidence? When I started out, at first, you're gonna feel like you're, you have this imposter syndrome that's like normal. I think every person feel, feel that as well. But for me, to build my confidence, it's like researching as well. You should know what you're talking about. You should be certain when you say something to your clients or you say something to the students, like, oh, because I, I, I have experienced it. I'm very confident that I'm telling you this because I went through this process before, you mm. know? So if you're certain with things, you will eventually build that confidence. And also, again, um, when you hear other people to like get mentor as well for yourself, like for me as a business, I get a mentor. And then when I see them, oh, they're going through the same challenge as well as a business owner, then I feel like, okay, I'm not alone. It's normal. Sometimes you feel like you feel low sometimes, right? Yeah. I also think about uh, this as a captain of a ship because when you embark on a journey mm -hmm. and let's say that uh, I wanted to go to 
Hawaii, let's say, yeah. from Canada. Let's say yeah. I need to hire a uh, ship to take me there yeah. and have a crew and all of that stuff. Uh, it's very different when I approach that captain and he tells me, oh, I'm not sure if we can make it, there's a storm, but we can try and we can do this <laughs> and that. Versus another captain who's like, I'm going to get you from this point to that point. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure we avoid all possible storms. Um, yeah. Even even though you might struggle with self-confidence, I feel like if you've done it before yourself, like you said, it, I've walked the path myself. Mm -hmm. So now I have that inner confidence because mm -hmm. it's from my own experience. This is where mm -hmm. your true strength lies mm -hmm. when it comes to finding the well of confidence. Mm -hmm. And also if you get more clients like more experience you build the confidence as well not just like in your own experience like at first in your first client you will share your own experience but eventually like after a year or two you're gonna share like oh i, I have experienced this with my other client already i was struggling badly to fit in because even the food was different. Mm, <laughs> the kind yeah. of food they have was different. The taste was different. Um, I used to complain a lot, but I decided I'm here, right? I'm here and uh, I need to mm, do something. I came here to have a better life. I didn't come here just to come and uh, enjoy the environment or whatever. I came here for a better life. So I had to hit the ground running and seek for opportunities to help myself. No one is going to do it for me. I expecting and I assume 9,000 a month. 9,000 a month. Yeah. Just like walking, you're not born with this ability to walk. But over time, step by step, you learn it. So after the first step comes the next and the next and the next. And then you can scale. I needed a team. I couldn't do everything myself, right? $40,000 is you're, you're managing everything. So $500, you're only doing writing. Right, you're just blog writing. But $40,000, you're doing blog content, you're doing SEO, uh, you're doing PPC, pay-per-click ad advertising on Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, every everywhere. The more platforms, the more money you make. And you're probably doing video content as well. We're doing email marketing as well. So it depends on the, the services, you'll get, you'll get more. I would be like, be patient. I felt like I tried to go so fast. When you're wanting to go so fast and people ask you, how are things going? Your, your internal dialogue is almost saying like, I'm not doing well. And that is not a good dialogue to have with yourself. You should be more supportive of yourself. If you have a physical product and you'd like to enter retail giants like Walmart or Sobeys, put yourself out there. So I go there and I meet people, like-minded people. So how I met Sobeys was uh, Volta. So Volta is an organization that helps entrepreneurs, especially people, entrepreneurs generally, if you, whatever that you have, if you want to set up a business, what kind of business, uh, Halifax Partnership is one of them. So Volta uh, had incubator programs to help entrepreneurs if you have an idea, uh, but I think they focus more on IT, Tech, yeah. tech, but sexy that, businesses. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> that's what they do. But they like creative businesses where they are creating something. So, uh, so they had a pitch competition, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they had that on the on on. I don't know where my husband got it from, but my husband used to work with iSense. Mm -hmm. So he had access to this networking event, this event. So he found out about them, uh, and it was through Halifax Partnership. Uh, because Halifax Partnership also help immigrants also settle in. Uh, so they passed on that information to my husband and he passed it on to me and he thought, oh, you should go there. It's a pitch competition. Just go and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was working full time. I had and I used to go to market. I was very tired that week. I was it was during the week, too, because I had to leave work and I have very young children, take care of the children and then go for the, the, the program. So the Volta, uh, uh, they still do this, the pitch competition from Volta, they still do it. And um, I went there, there were people there, they were pitching, so I just went to observe to see what was going on. So the judges, one of the judges was uh, the buyer, uh, the director for Subis, and that is how I met him. Mm -hmm. So after the pitch competition, they did everything, those who won, won, 
and it was time for networking. So that is how I was able to network. I, 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 I spoke to, I introduced myself to the, uh, the, the director for uh, the Sobeys uh, Athletic Canada and I told him, luckily for me, there was a girl that actually pitched her care, but she was selling. Mm -hmm. She was selling other people's products. So it, it, it kind of set the, the ground for me. So I told him that I'm like that girl, I make natural product, but I make it myself. I don't just resell, I make the product. And that's what Sobeys is looking for. People that actually make the product. So they want to have contact with the buyer. So they were like, okay, all right, I would like to see what you have. So I gave him my contact, he gave me his contact, I reached out to him, and that's how everything started. Now that you're equipped with a guide to starting a business, let's discuss permits. And if you'd like to run an online business in general, you don't really need to worry about permits, only business registration. If it's a physical product, here's what Joyce and Lucy had to say about it. You don't really need any special permit. You just have to follow the uh, uh, manufacturing standard yourself to make sure that your product is, the environment is clean. So um, that's why it's easy. You can start from your home and do that. Your proposal plan is most important. You have a permit and business license. And business license with working with the city, Vancouver City Hall, or federal government, which is uh, British Columbia. And the other thing is food permit, you have to work with uh, Vancouver Health. So both permit is a uh, permit uh, really difficult to deal with that. But I would say health is the most difficult because they require lots of like of sensitive, complicated points. What kind of information do I need? Like uh, firstly, you have to create your menu exactly. Like uh, for example, if you want to make some pasta, you have to write down every single like uh, recipe, how you're gonna cook each step, because they want to know what you're gonna do exactly with your uh, menu, and they can like think about what you need of your the, your site. What about checks? Have they come in to check whether yeah. there's hygiene and stuff? Yeah, they check. Yeah. So once your floor plan with the menu is approved by them. They would, the rear actual inspector will be visit. Mm -hmm. They will come to inspect rear. So that is initial inspection. Now, how do you choose a business name and register your business as an immigrant in Canada? Not only to answer this question, but to speak about my experience with running a business, saving money and investing, I'd like to welcome you to immigrantwealth.ca. It's a new platform I've launched to help newcomers make it in Canada. In the video description below, you'll find a link to a course where I discuss the process of selecting a name, registering, bookkeeping. Speaking of bookkeeping, as a business owner, you will have to pay taxes. Once a year, you need to file everything. Therefore, not to break tax laws and not to be deported, I personally use QuickBooks. It's a software that helps you track expenses so you don't need to hire an accountant to spend so much money on that. It's also very affordable at only $20 a month, though with the link I have below, they're giving you a discount for the first three months and this is not sponsored by them. Make sure you watch the business course I have linked in the description below for you to learn more about these steps, which are very important to your success. Also, if you want to learn how Simon made $200,000 a month or MC turned her journey into a six-figure business, subscribe to Immigrant Wealth on YouTube to watch all four interviews in full length. Please let me know what you think about this format of the video if you like the topic in the comments below and check out the description for all the valuable links and I'll see you next Sunday.